guys, I am Taylor. I am in the math room this year, and I'm going to show you a little bit about my room and how it's all set up. Um, so the room is set up in a way where the kids will be learning math concepts in a concrete form, but they'll be doing a lot of hands-on work. Um, there's no memorization of math facts. It's all about learning the actual process. Um, the room is set up from left to right, so just like reading, along with the shelves too. So if we start at this one, each shelf is left to right, and as you go around the room, it gets more difficult and you learn higher skills. Um, and then, let's see, the first work that I'm going to show you are the number rods. So the kids may be familiar with these from the sensorial room because they have the red rods. So they first are going to get them out and lay them from the shortest to tallest, and they will count all of them as they put them out. They won't be starting with putting the numbers there. They'll just start with the rods. And when you count them, they will use their hand and count one, two, three. So it practices one-to-one -one correspondence, switching each number or counting another number when they move colors. And then after they know how to lay them out right, I will help them get started learning their numbers and putting those out. And that develops um, the association between the quantity and the actual numeral. Um, and then we're going to move to our stamps with the numerals. So um, the kids will lay them out in order and they will trace them with their fingers and say one. And then they will go over to the sand and say one as they make it in the sand. And then they just shake it, make the next number. And these will help with muscle memory and learning how to write the numbers eventually and know what the numbers look like. And they say it while they write it so that they make that connection. Um, and then over here, we have a, spin a spindle box. We actually have two, to two of these. We have the zero to four spindle box, and then we also have a five to nine. They can do them together or do them separate. So the kids start and they look at the numbers and they have to count how many out. So one, they do one and they hold it in their hand to feel how that feels. And then they go all the way up and they'll know that four, one, two, three, four, they can feel that that's more than one cell. Their hand is more full. And then same with nine, they'll realize that nine is very hard for them to hold. Um, and then we also introduce zero with this, learning that that's an empty set. Um, and then we also have a lot, oh, over here, lastly, we have um, our bead stairs. And these are nice because the numbers of the color of beads, those will stay the same throughout all of math, Montessori math. Um, so when they go to 209, they'll already recognize those and be ready to use those. Um, and then also around the room, we have a lot of cards and counter work. So these can have added, um, added steps that make them a little more difficult. So with this one, the numbers are fixed, so they're already out in order. So all they have to do is count the shells and put them out. And then ones like this, the numbers are loose, so they have to lay them in order and know what order they go in, and then count the starfish out to know how many go with that number. And then we also have works where um, you have to sort them. So I help them get striped fish, blue fish, and then they have to count how many fish are in that color. Um, and then I laid this work out to show how the children line them up in a row with their numbers going in order and then count their fish out. And they'll be able to see that the five fish in the bowl is bigger than the one fish because that's more. They can see how it gets bigger as it goes on. And then on this side of the room, um, right here, we start with our, we have our team numbers. So the kids will get, um, get a lot of practice on that. And then as the years, year goes on, we will work on place value with tens, hundreds, and thousands. Um, and then over here, we have our modern math skills. So right now, I have out missing numbers, forming sets, graphing, addition, subtraction, and greater than and less than. And then also throughout the year, we'll work on money, um, measurement, and time, and maybe a few more. And that's math room. Bye, everyone.
Sean, I'm Lisa. I have been here for 22 years. Um, I've taught in lots of the rooms, and this is my third year in the language room and geography room. Um, in language, this is our pre-language area. It starts with very concrete things, matching objects to objects. We then go to a little bit more abstract and do object to picture. After that, we go even more abstract and do pictures to pictures. And then we go into what we call a nomenclature or three-part chart. This is found in each room throughout the year. Um, it's a big vocabulary builder, but I use it as more of letter differentiation and making sure that their eyes are tracking from left to right. Um, this is C-O-W and this is C-O-N. So I want to make sure that they're following that all the way through. This is logic and reasoning here. So we have things like front to back where they're going to be finding similarities and differences in things. Um, they're going to be classifying and doing opposites, big and little. Again, they're finding the similar shells, but then telling me which one's big, which one's little. Down here we have two parts of a whole, three parts of a whole, putting things together. That comes, um, you'll see that more when they're starting to read, when they're putting A and T together to say at, and then they're putting M-A-T to say mat. Um, patterning is next. And that is so that they can find different patterns in words and letters and go into a strong reading. Um, this is putting things in a sequence from beginning to end, so strong storytelling. Um, then we do prepositions. Jeff is in the pool, he's out of the pool, he's to the left of the pool, he's under the pool, things like that. Uh, we then go into rhyming. And that, again, will go into more of the word families of at, mat, cat, sat. If they can rhyme and just change that initial sound, it's going to be easier for them for word families. Um, this is I Spy, and it is a game that you can play all the time with your kids anywhere that you are to see if they're hearing the initial sounds in different words. Um, if they don't hear the sound when we go into the letters, it's not going to make any sense. They're not going to have that connection. So we want to make sure that they're hearing the sounds first. These are our sandpaper letters, where then we can pull it out and say, this is M, M says mm, and they can trace it so they get that feeling, and it stays with them a little bit better. Um, after that, we have sound boxes. This is an example of a sound box. It would have mm, and t, and then they would have to put different objects with those letters. This shelf is more initial sounds, um, doing pictures that have the same initial sound, and then adding letters in with it. Um, later, we would add middle sounds and ending sounds. Um, it also has the alphabet and putting things in alphabetical order, or matching capital and lowercase alphabet. At the middle, or the ending of the year, somewhere, depending on where the children are, they will use the movable alphabet. Um, this is for the child who can't write yet. They could use this, or if we are introducing word families, we would start with just at, and then we would go into the family and just change that initial sound. This is our handwriting section. Then you'd start with the middle inset. We always start with the frame first because it's easier for their pencil to stay in here. And if once they have the frame, then they can trace the inset first. We also have handwriting without tears. Um, so we use MacMan a lot. And you can make any letter in the alphabet using big lines, little lines, big curves to little curves, so we work a lot with those in that language, and we have a lot of line tracing. Right now we're doing shapes, mainly in this building we do man writing, and that's our main focus in our man writing. Back here is our geography section. Um, this slide over here 
So the food is mostly on land, air, and water. And we talk about different animals, different transportational things, things that the kids are already familiar with. Um, and then on this side, we do more continents and things around the world. Um, throughout the year, we will focus on a different continent with each unit. Right now, we are in North America, and that will go over with our next unit also. But we are just doing animals and different people and cultures and things like that. So, hope you have a fun year together. Hi, I'm Keisha, and welcome to Sensorial. Um, one of the ways we teach our concepts in Sensorial with our colors and our shapes and our cycles and our different textures is by using what's called a three-period lesson. A three-period lesson starts out with identifying what you are talking about, such as yellow. This is the color yellow. This is yellow. Red. This is the color red. Red. And this is blue. This is the color blue. Blue. After the children have repeated the colors back to us, we then will ask them, I would like for you to show me which is the color yellow. And hopefully they will pick yellow and point it out to me and show it to me. We also will ask them the color red and the color blue. The third part of the three period lesson is where they actually get to realize what they are showing, what the colors are or what the shapes are or what the solids are. I will ask them, can you tell me what this is? And they'll say, this is yellow. But what is this? This is blue. And then what is this? And this is red. So we're reinforcing the colors so the kids' children are learning the repetition from us about what colors they are, what shapes we're showing them, what our different solids are. We can do this with our solid words too. This is a cone, this is a cylinder, this is a cube, this is a sphere. So they're repeating it and it's, make, it's giving them memories as to what the different shapes and colors look like. So also in sensorial, we are learning through our five senses. We're doing things that we hear, we're different sounds, um, such as over here on our five senses shelf. We have auditory works where they can hear the sound of the ocean, where they can hear different sounds, whether they're loud or quiet. We have works that work on gustatory, um, where they're tasting. Um, right now, we're currently tasting goldfish in different colors to see if they taste the same. We're also tasting salt water and fresh water. Um, they can get experience, not a lot of salt, <laughs> so, um, just the different types of water there are, whether it's ocean water or fresh water. Um, and then we have our olfactory sense, which is smelling things. We're smelling different items that you would find out in the tropics, such as coconuts and bananas and lemons. Um, behind you, you will see our color works. We're starting with color box one, which is red, blue, and yellow. We move into the different colors, um, work our way up to color box two. Um, which are your primary and your secondary colors, plus our neutrals of white, black, and brown, and gray. Um, from there, we are working into color words and learning how to identify the words with the color that matches with them. Um, we're doing, working on light and dark, um, different transparencies, and color box three are shades. There are four shades in our color box that range from light to dark in, in four various shades of the same color, whether it's blue, yellow, green, purple, black, brown, gray. Um, yeah. So we're going, so children are getting all kinds of experiences with colors. Um, we also have our shape shelf where we're learning different shapes, um, our flat shapes. And we're doing some silhouette works, we're matching shapes, we're shorting, sorting shapes, we're identifying your basic shapes of your circle, your rectangle, your square, your triangle, but we're also introducing rhombus, trapezoid, pentagon, hexagon. So the children will be learning all kinds of new words. It's fun to learn a new word here at school and you get to try it out with your parents at home. 
um, our favorite word this past school year was parallelogram. Um, hearing that your three-year-old say parallelogram and actually knowing what one looks like is pretty cool. We have over here some writing works where the children are doing metal insets um, so they can learn the shape of the muscle memory and the shape of the shape, shape of the shapes. Um, we're matching colors, we're copying graphs, we're using our fine motor skills to learn how to trace and follow a line. Montessori had traditional works that she used throughout all of her history um, in all of her Montessori schools. Um, you have your pink tower. Your pink tower and your broad stairs and your red rods are the precise discrimination. The children are learning to go from large to small with our pink tower and putting them in order. There's 10 blocks and they're putting them in order from large to small. And so we can take it off and when we put it back on, we have to realize that we cannot start with the teeny tiny square cube and work our way up to the large. We have to go from large to big. Our broad stairs are doing width. Is it wide or is it thin? Our red rods, we are going from long to short. We also have our knob and knobless cylinder, which are also traditional Montessori materials. You will see on the knobless, knob cylinders and the knobless cylinders, they basically look the same, except for the knob cylinders have a knob to hold on to. The first set ranges in width. They're all the same height, they range in width. The red set is the exact same as set one on knob cylinders, so you can use them together. You can do patterns with them. So we work on doing them individually, and then as we go on, we work our way up to doing graphs with the children also. Set two ranges from height, it's all and width, so they're all, they go from to big to little, and vary from width and height. Set two goes from short to tall, and then set four, or set three, set four is all the same diameter, but they range in height and go from tall to short. Um, one last thing that we have here in the sensorial room is we have our texture shelf. The children are learning about rough and smooth, hard and soft. They're learning weights, whether something's heavy or light. Um, we're also learning about big and little and size and small, medium and large. That is, oh, some other things that we'll be doing this school year is um, our 1030 meeting. We will be doing a language enrichment program here in Sensorial. So we'll be learning with our ears and with our sounds to make different letter sounds and identifying letters also. Um, we might even throw a little sign language in. I've got to learn it myself, but we'll get there. <laughs> and it's a learning process with us all together. And that is all. I think that's it. So I hope you enjoyed your tour here at Terry's. I think I'm the last person to go. Um, thank you for coming, and we hope to see you soon at the door. Say hi if you see us, and we're looking forward to a great school year. Thanks. Thank you, Keisha. You're welcome. Well, I hope you all enjoyed your tour. There's a few things that I want to remind you. The first one is that this is where you're also going to be picking up your children. Um, again, please remember if you uh, to, to give us a call if nobody's coming to the door. The phone number is 761-0223. A teacher will gather your child. They will change their shoes um, and bring them to you, gather their things as well. Um, toward the end of the night, it can be a little busy, so please be patient with us. Uh, we will call we'll, ahead. We'll have them ahead. inside and ready. If you're in a hurry, definitely call ahead mm -hmm. um, so that we can have them ready by the time you get here. Um, so some of the other things that I wanted to remind you of is that on Monday, the first day of school, we are going to have a packet of information for you to take home. Um, it's going to have all the open house stuff in it. It's going to have your children's schedule, um, our specials, uh, our meetings, um, and a lot of other information. That'll give you a few days to actually look through it, and then we will have our Zoom meeting that Thursday, Thursday the... 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th. 13th. 
um, and you will be able to ask any questions if something comes up. So we look forward to seeing you then. Um, again, feel free if you have any questions, call your homeroom teacher. Um, you can even contact me at any time or the office. Thank you.